Okay. So um, hello, everyone. Thank you for check, stopping into the podcast. Today, we will be talking to Mr. Archie J. Jenkins. Did I say that right? Correct. The owner of 180 Life, 180 Show in a magazine? Correct. 180life.com. 180life.com. So it's like, um, what, what exactly is this for everything that's associated with 180, your brand, or is it one particular? So 180life.com is a marketing. We are a marketing firm, um, but it is associated with everything, everything marketing. So from the pictures that you put out to building web pages, to magazine placement, we are partnered with five other magazines um, worldwide. Um, from TV placement, we do have our own recording studio, which um, I have my office in the back of. So yes, ma'am. So where are you based out of? I'm based out of San Antonio, Texas. So for your, so I was looking at some of your previous um, videos. It looked like you started out with artists, maybe like doing music or whatnot. Are you still doing it or have you ventured off into other things? Um, I do still work with artists. I still work. We're actually having a talent show on the 20th. It is a virtual talent show. I'm learning to do a lot of things virtually, not only from the business aspect behind the scenes of saving me a lot of money, but also um, just because it will get a further reach because people don't want to come out. People don't want to buy tickets or whatever. So then it's easier for me to do a lot of things virtual. So yeah, I actually manage four artists right now. I do manage them. Um, I do brand management for them. One, two of them I do everyday management. So booking shows, um, pushing them to different record labels, getting spins on different shows. Um, yeah. Have so, you taken them out on tour yet? Or have y'all done anything like that yet? Like done a tour, set up a tour or something? One of my artists, we did set up a tour. He's seven. So it's kind of hard when it comes to kids because I'm like right. really protective. I'm right. I'm like really like I'm that guy. Um, so I partnered with a couple of people. I, had a, I have a guy out here that owns a skating rink. I partnered with a couple of other people that had um, a kids event in the park. So I just brought my tour to them. And uh, we had like three or four kids tour with us. The issue that I have with young kids that as I've grown, I said I wasn't going to take no more children on. Um, their parents want to start for free. I'm going to put it like that. They, they parents see the start. Every parent sees the stardom in their kid, which I'm grateful. Um, I have my own kids, so I definitely understand it. But um, yeah, every maybe maybe they just see that you're a nice guy and they like we just gonna try them and then <laughs> yeah, and that's where you start learning and that's where we lose a lot of money and yeah. I'm hey, so you you gotta put your foot down you gotta do yeah it. so <laughs> so um but I did I started off with um celebrity photography so I I've been on tour six times. Mm -hmm. um I'm actually doing an author's tour right now so I have authors that are on tour right now um I've done three of those so this is my third one I actually be in Houston next week mm -hmm. I'm hosting one out there and then they come to San Antonio on August the 5th okay cool so um before I get I had a question like I said I, I briefly looked at some of your videos right yes, so here I'm about to hit you with some some little my, my little Aisha statistics okay <laughs> so season one episode one of your I guess podcast or your show I was doing a reality trying to do reality right kinda. and I can't okay. look I'm gonna tell you I like it because like the type of film that I like personally is like documentaries and mm -hmm. like live stuff like that so I like what you were doing and I'm like man you should like really keep doing it yeah yes, that like that like that was that's it's my, spicy like that's i know i know but you had it looked like you had a team with you but like 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 you say with multiple other things that you do you say uh the consistency and i think it'll be i think you would have seen the benefit from like keeping that series going i think you would have yeah. seen the benefit eventually because like you have other people like yo man i want to be part of this whatever you know yeah but yeah, um yeah. so uh, approximately one year ago, um, you stated that 180 started when you were incarcerated and you were dreaming or sleeping and you had visions of your life pretty much repeating the same cycle, making you a third time, making it like your third time in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. But then you said you had a conversation with yourself and you were like, you know, what do I want to do different? <laughs> right. So my question to you is based off of that uh, scenario and that situation, was that the first time that you had that conversation with yourself or thought? I like that question. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie and say that was my first time because right. it was. I'm I'm a PK. I'm a preacher's kid, so I always I tell people and I tell myself I reflect on my life very frequent, like more than most. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't my first time, but that was my first time in a situation that I didn't have control over. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was my. I feel like that was my first time reflecting genuinely, like genuine, genuine, like. Let's not put not it the back. New Year's resolution reflection. Right. <laughs> you know, God, if you get me on this one, I promise I'll go right. to church. Like, not the Christmas day, we going to church, Easter <laughs> and Christmas. You know what I'm saying? New Year's right. resolution, I'm going to lose 15 pounds. Like, I really put it all on the line. Like, what are you really doing? I stopped blaming other people. You know, like, that was one thing that I had a bad habit with was I would blame other people for the situations I was in. Well, if this person wouldn't have told on me, or if this person would have kept it a hundred, or if this person would have never stole this, or if this person, when in the end of the day, there's no right way to do wrong. If you would have just did everything the right way, you wouldn't, nobody could tell on you because you're doing it a hundred percent the right way. Number two, if you wasn't hanging around with these type of people, no one could steal all your money and you would still have your plate. You get where I'm coming from. Yeah, so that was, that was your moment of, I want to say, if you said that's the moment you, you, you couldn't blame nobody else. You realized you had to, you know, be responsible for your action. That was your moment of maturity then. Right. Your mouth. And it was mouth. sad that it was so late. That's the part that makes me upset though. But see, don't be sad about that because it happens when it needs to happen and you learn what you need to learn and it makes you who you are, right? So like yes. yeah. for people who might not finish high school, they might feel like they're missing out on something they're always trying to keep and catch up. And then they realize you know, they didn't go to college, but they still kind of like, I went into the military. So mm-hmm. I still had that experience. It was just in a different yeah. setting, right? You know what I mean? But the yeah. whole, up, up until that point, you realize you, you felt like you were missing out on something or you had to play keep up or catch up with your friends. And you realize, man, they had college debt. Some of them yeah. went, but not all of them. <laughs> right, right. You know, you know what I mean? So it's just different, you know? Yeah, I feel don't, you. Yeah, don't feel bad, like, because you happy, right? You happy, you... you um, now I'm like in a, such a great space, happy, um content learning like okay I could do this I'm learning that things take time I've I've learned to yeah 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 that's good okay let me see let me, my other question I got out sorry okay. uh, let's say at that time would you describe this oh okay so can you describe your support system then versus now when you decided to actually put your time and effort into 180 do you can you are you able to recognize your the type of support system that you had didn't have lack of which you may have wanted more of like do you know the difference between the support you had then versus now? Definitely. So one thing that's different with me when it comes to the support system, I learned that the real friends that were back then were not friends. You know, the friends then that I swore was supporting me. They weren't even really friends. And then now it's a whole group of different group of support. Like it's real support, like real genuine love, like really like, man, I see you when it sometimes I get a little frustrated about it because my phone used to ring 24 seven. What are you doing? Hey, I'm coming over. Hey, let's have a cookout. Hey, let's do this. Hey, we going here. Okay. We're going to Atlanta. All right. Let's go to DC. Okay. Let's go out here to Cali. And then now it's like crickets, but then the people that I'm around that support me, mm-hmm. um, we're all business owners. We're right. all working. Like my hours, like, okay, I got a meeting at two. I got to do this at this, like, but the support is so real, but like by seven o'clock when it's dinner time or Sundays when I have Sunday dinner and all the support really comes no matter if they have to drive an hour and a half to get to my house or I have to drive two hours to get to their house, we really support each other a hundred percent. And we have this understanding that if one of us win, we all win. Um, compared to before, it was take, 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 take. What can I get from you? Because of the people that you were like maybe associated with. So, right, so do right. you with your growth, do you recognize that? You may have had people who wanted to support you back then, but because of what you were doing, they had to pull back their support until they seen that change in you. And knowing that, are you that type of person now or will you just offer your support to anyone? 
I don't offer my support to anyone. I'm I'm sorry. I I say that fast. I said as humble as I as I can. The only reason why I've been in this game for five years, I've been home for five years, not on paper, no nothing, and building my brand from the ground up. And people, there's people still to this day that are watching, and they're waiting, and I they're waiting to be able to say, "I told you so." Mm-hmm. That's that's one reason why I push even harder to show them that you didn't tell nobody so. Uh, let me explain to you the narrative of what it's going to be. Um, but so are they your motivation the, then? It is. It They're is. Your motivation. There are people that I do feel that backed up till till now. You get where I'm coming from, but. I still feel a way. I'm, I'm not going to lie and act like I'm just like, oh, okay, you cool now. Because I get a lot of people. Um, I'm blessed in Atlanta. You know, I have I have a whole team and security and all this. Um, and we were at a restaurant. We were with some friends. We were at a restaurant. People wanted pictures and this and the third. And um, my security guard ended up having to tell them, hey, him and his wife are trying to eat. Like, let's let them finish. They'll get with you. Give us a second. And um. The next day, we went back to that restaurant because my wife loved it so much. And my um, a couple of our family members had flew into town. And we went back to take them. And my family member, they did the same thing. You know, security had to tell them, give them a second. They're having family time, blah, 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 blah. I took like five pictures. And I was like, hey, you know, boom. And my family member said, oh, I always knew you was going to make it. And that right there, when people do that, that's the part that frustrates me because When I was down and I wasn't doing the right thing, like when does a person walk over there and say, hey, bro, hey, Mr. 180, hey, Archie. At that time, I wasn't Mr. 180. I was just AJ, you know? Hey, you're not looking good. Hey, you're not doing this right. Hey, when do you reach out? Do you just give up? It'd be like, oh, just let him do whatever he wants to do. And that's the part Would you have listened? Do you think you would have listened back then when you was in that state in your life? Like, do you think you would have listened if someone would have came over to you and said, would you? Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. I'm not going to lie and say I would have. But that's why I love my dad so much. Everybody like trips like, man, you and your dad have such a great relationship. I remember my dad used to pull up to the clubs. Yeah. I remember my dad used to, you know what I'm saying? Because I was out there. I was doing my thing. I'm, you know, and my dad would pull me out the club. Like, they'd be like, your dad is here. And I'd be like, are you serious? This is what we doing? Seriously, like, pop, I'm trying to, you know, and, and I I respect it now. Back then, yeah, we would argue, we would fuss, we would fight or whatever. I was grown. Like, I'm like, man, but now I respect it. Like, man, somebody stood by me when I couldn't stand by myself. You get where I'm coming from? So I probably wouldn't have listened, but I would respect it more that you kept checking on me, kept making sure, hey, look. I know you're not going to listen, but let me tell you what I feel. Giving up so easy, like that's me. I'm nicer than, I, I do support a lot of people that I shouldn't. I'm nicer than what I am because I remember when people gave up on me. So I try not to give up on, even when I hear people that I'm like, oh, you can't, they can't say, you know how you be like, oh, and then you like, okay, well, let me support them because they believe in their dream. Maybe give them some constructive criticism or whatever. But I don't like to just like, okay, I'm giving up. I don't give up that easy because I remember when everybody gave up on me and I know how that feels, if that makes sense. Yeah, I understand. So I, I kind of get the concept of 180, but like if you had to just sum it up in a few words, what does 180 mean to you? Like you, you're 180, your definition. <laughs> I'm glad that you asked. That's my favorite thing to tell people. 180 life, 180. If you think of a circle, a circle, all of those that didn't graduate, I didn't graduate high school either. I have my GED and I have my college degree, but a circle is a 360. We're going to take it math, simple, simple math, fifth grade math. A circle circle is a 360. You hear a lot of people say, oh, I did a 360. Well, you're back in the same spot. I used to get out and do good for a couple weeks. Then I'm back in the same spot. Get out, do good for a couple months, back in the same spot. You know, so that's a 360. But when you do a 180, 180 makes you turn away. That's half the circle. And when you're half the circle, your back is uh, is is facing where you began. So you're now you're walking in a totally different direction. Um, 180 to me, man, 
I had to let go of friends. I had to let go of family. I had to really change my whole mindset. And that's why I tell people 180 is not just a brand. It's a lifestyle. And so just to break down the whole 180 life, people were like, man, you put a Y in life instead of I. You don't know how to spell it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was tired of living for I. I was tired of living for me. And then I had to start living for the why. why and, and when you start living for why, you'll stop doing dumb stuff. I live for my wife. I live for my my, my son. I live for my my nieces, my nephews, my mama. I live for that little little young boy with the big head, big nose, big lips that just can't understand, like, why do people keep picking on me? I live for that person that got low self-esteem. I live for that person that went through sexual abuse. I live for that person that didn't finish high school and they called them stupid. So guess what? I can show them. If I can do it, you can too. 180 gonna, life, baby. You going to stick with a 180 for life? <laughs> I, I, I am. It, okay. it, it's... It's a I lifestyle. Just, for me. I just had an idea. Since you're gonna stick with that 180 for life, and um, you started it like that's your company and everything. Maybe we should do like reflection videos every five years about 180 or every five to ten years and have that part of your website or something. I see that already. you went to film. You in the film and stuff, right? Yes, ma'am. So what else are you? Um, I guess producing other than your marketing stuff. Like, what's your personal projects when it comes to film? So right now, I just, we just opened up the studio here, the, um, which everybody's like, man, it's a podcast studio, talk show studio, whatever you want to call it. We just opened that up. Um, I am working with a young man and we're doing a show. I should know the name of it. Y'all please forgive me, but, um, we're doing a show to reflect off of how it was going to prison, how it was. We're reflecting how I was going to prison and coming out being entrepreneurs and being successful black men. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working on that show now, mm -hmm. really just talking about the mind games that we went through in jail, mm -hmm. going through losing our family, losing everything that we had, and then coming back and rebuilding and what it takes to rebuild on a national level and uh, really just encouragement. Um, of course, we have the talent show coming up on April the 20th. I'm doing that. As you know, I am the host with the most, Mr. 180. So I'm uh, I'm hosting. I have like a lot of shows coming up. November, I have a fashion show that I'm hosting. Um, April the 15th, I have a book fair that I'm hosting. Mm -hmm. So basically really just hosting and and pushing, pushing 180 and talking to people about change. Um, of course, you know I'm a motivational speaker. So I have like three three things set up with that. I'm I'm partnered with Pflugerville Independent School District. Shout out to Pflugerville Independent School District. Uh partner with them. So I do motivational speaking to the high risk kids that um are high risk for dropout. So I talk to them and let them know that, you know, don't give up on it. You gotta push after it. If mama not pushing, daddy not pushing, big mama not pushing. Auntie, uncle not pushing. You got to push after it. Just finish this and put one step in front of the other and keep going. That's pretty cool. You do that pretty much in um, where you living in the area that you're in or you travel for that? So I travel for that. I actually am partnered with a school that's two hours away. Okay. Um, so I have sent it out in the schools in the area. But as you know, budgeting is like once a year. So they'll tell you, oh, we're going to check out our budget next year to try to get it into their schools. You and I that, understand. There is know, a... I just thought about something. I think there's a, um, I think they're doing like a Black Wall Street type event or something up here, and um, it's a nonprofit owned by this um, this black lady, and um, I know she put out something like she was looking for, maybe performers or something. I don't know if you or your audiences might be interested. Or not. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I would, I'm I would email you her contact information and let you. Uh, but it's up here in the uh, Houston area. Um, yeah, I'm always in Houston. I'm yeah, always. Yeah. You might have heard, uh, I'm not even going, it might be Hub City or Hub, oh, I forget. I, I'm I know the girl that does Black Wall Street. I haven't seen her post anything lately. I don't know if it's the so, same girl, because like, you know, everybody be doing their own little version of it. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Um, oh, I, see I should know, right. <laughs> I um, should know. Okay. I, I'm a, I'm a, well, I'll just send you what I got. Maybe it's the same person. Maybe if not, it's, um, I think her last name was Bland. The lady that I was talking to, maybe. I can't remember. But I'll send you um 
the information that she gave me. I've just been reaching out to different people, telling them about it, because I'm not going to be able to make the event. Okay, okay. But, um, it might I'm be definitely, I'll know. be in Houston April the 15th. I'll definitely, um, I'm going to send you the event that we're doing. I'm I'm hosting out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you know Marcita Jordan. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know a lot of people. I'm not even really from here. <laughs> I just live out here. I, I, <laughs> I, I I came to Houston. I did a tour in Houston, and I loved it. And like I tell people, the difference between me and a lot of people is, I'm down to network. Mm -hmm. Down to the, your network with the picture network. And so, you know, I'm not really big on the circles and the clicks and the this and the that. So yeah, I'm, all, I'm always going to be an outsider. <laughs> yeah, so I'm always like, people be like, man, how did you meet that person? Then I'll be finding out like this person knows this person. And I was like, well, how did you meet them? I didn't tell you about them. I'm like, hey, I'm always, as you see, I'm always posting. I'm always trying to meet new people, trying to um, get in contact with new people and really, really work on new things. Yeah. How long have you been in San Antonio? Four years, four years. Okay, yeah, I left. I left back in 2010. I stayed there for a few years myself. Okay, the whole city in like two weeks. <laughs> we uh, I stay north in Stone Oak area, so we 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 got there and we're gonna stay here for a little bit. Yeah. So now we like, uh -huh. I was like, you ready to move? She's like, uh, no, not yet. Okay, so one of the things that I've I've gotten into asking people is um. I don't know how you want to class. I don't know if you want to classify yourself as black or African American or whatever. Uh, what show? What time? No. no. Okay. Okay. So, no, no. Uh, so yeah, I had a uh, doing business while black and then doing business with black folks. You know, pros and cons. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm definitely definitely um doing business while black. Let's first get on that one. Okay. I'm doing business while as being a black man. It has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. it, it has its ups and downs. Um, I'm a go getter, so I knock out the what is it? I knock out the excuses. I don't really do the excuses. So, um, again, it has its ups and downs. My thing is, is they don't like to give knowledge as a black man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've learned that I have to be more professional than the average person because I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned because of the crab in the bucket mentality that my people have mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to like I tell people I sell the same product I've been selling for the last three years my magazine's been operated for two and a half years now mm -hmm. I sell the same product I was doing before I made the magazine now I just sell it in a different way mm -hmm. um and it's sad that you have to do that um I do feel that I could have more opportunity, but a lot of times because I feel like sometimes I don't feel like I get defeated always just being black. I don't because I'm gonna get what I what I'm I'm going after it 100 percent If one says no, another will. But there are a lot of times being black, people won't help you. Um, you don't fit in. I've been to the pop-ups to and you know, being the only black vendor there. Mm -hmm. you're the only one that ain't getting no sales and you know and the crazy thing is, you know <laughs> and you have good product and you have your shirt line and you mm -hmm. know I have merch and I got cups and I got magazines and I got this and then on the other hand you know when I do walk into I just was in a board meeting two weeks ago black only black in the room mm -hmm. and I had to go How'd to the um when you first walked in, how did you feel? I'm not going to lie to you. That, I had to go to the bathroom. I, I told him, can I go to the restroom real quick? Because it was a little overwhelming. Because I'm like, ooh. You know, and my wife was telling me, put on a suit. And everybody that knows me knows it's not in the contract. I don't put on suits. I do not like suits. But I did wear a button-down shirt with some mm -hmm. slacks and some loafers. You know what I'm saying? So I did go in looking nice. And they all stopped. Like, the whole room froze and looked. And I had to tell myself, like, you belong here. You mm -hmm. you belong in this in this moment. You fit in. And I've learned, and if I could give advice to anybody as a black person, you get one shot. What are you gonna do with that shot? And I've learned to make myself more educated than what they think. Let them know that hey, I belong where I'm at. Mm -hmm. No matter what color, black, white, yellow, 
red, blue, or green. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've studied. I might not have went to an eight-year college or a four-year college, but I've studied just as much as they have. Mm -hmm. And I can bring just as much as they do to the table. Mm -hmm. Look at you. <laughs> so I think I seen you post the other day that you are a new parent. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am baby 180 is in the building. He is here. Woo, he so, is... so how how ironic is this gonna be in about two years from you having that discipline in your child show and then now you're <laughs> like did you and your wife have this conversation before y'all had kids or y'all now sitting here saying, wait, I don't like that. I don't like y'all doing it now or did y'all have it before? Or y'all haven't even had it yet? So we did have it before. I'm not going to lie. We did have it before. I'm a disciplinarian. So we did have it before. And we, we've we raised kids before. Mm -hmm. So um, we had the conversation. It's interesting now because it's, oh, we want this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And then now he's here. And that boy, he can do no wrong. Like, Right. I was up till six o'clock in the morning the other day and I had to be at work at eight. I had to go go to one of our offices at eight. And I'm like, okay, it's I love like you, it's a love like never before. And I'm like, okay, well, when he gets older, like my wife, she's turning more into the disciplinarian than me. Yeah. Like she's like, man, there's no it's need usually to, how to it is, really. It's usually um, how it is. I said that's usually kind of how it is. The moms are more because like I think just being a mom, it's like I, I, I'm gonna love you and nurture you, but I know what's out there waiting on you, so I can't, right. I can't, I can't. You, we, we don't have the luxury. <laughs> I feel like, like I told her, it's funny because when we had our talk, my wife was, she was gonna be a disciplinarian, this that, and the third. Then we babysat our nephew and niece, and she just let them run through the house, and I'm like what are you doing? Like, there's no structure. You know, it was funny. And then I'm like, wait, we just had to talk about this. You said you was going to do this, this, and that. And then as we, before we, you know, we have a lot of nieces. And um, I just watched how my wife would be like, because at first it was, okay, we'll see. Um, if he says he wants this and I say no, or oh, we'll see when that happens. But now, like, with me, with our nieces, I don't believe in makeup. I don't think you should have all these long nails yet. Let mm -hmm. them be kids, you know? That's just me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my wife respects it. And she'd be like, I got, I tried to get you a little lip gloss, you know, your uncle. He ain't gonna <laughs> let you do that, you know? And I don't believe kids should have soda. So, uh, you know, your uncle, he's not gonna let you. And Look, so just really- the I didn't even get phones until a couple of years ago, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to have mine in front of the, the phones and the, the iPads and the this and that. So that's where I'm like, okay, somehow I got to implement a five-year-old in my everyday at the office. You know what I'm saying? How am I going to be able to handle a five and a seven-year-old? It's about to kick us off so because I got the free version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do I do appreciate um, talking to you. Um, I think you pretty much answered all the questions I had written down. Um, uh... Oh yeah, I had one more question, but probably gonna run out of time. I was gonna ask you, um, do you think you're the first at anything? And if not, um, what will you what do you have any goals to be the first of to do something? You know, like I'm the first person to do I anything. Be, I do want to be the first black man to build a network that can live for a legacy. I do want to be to like you you see the celebrities do it. Mm -hmm. But the first out of my community, I'm the I'm the first out of my community to like be on TV and stuff. So people be like, wow, like I see you. Okay, I see you doing it. Um, but I do believe that I tell my mom all the time, I believe I'm gonna be the first millionaire in our family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, hey, doing it. And it's not for the money for me, but I believe that God's gonna give me more than what I'm asking for. You oh, know. absolutely. Absolutely. Are so, you, do you feel you're successful? Are you still feel like you haven't reached that yet? I do feel successful. I, again, I'm, I'm content of where I'm at. And I tell my team all the time now, if we never get another interview, we never sell another magazine. I'm so grateful to be Mr. 180, to really have 
met all the people I've met, to really have blessed, be in the homes of all the people I'm in the homes of, to be in the ears of all the people I've been in the ears of. Um, am I stopping? That doesn't mean I'm stopping. I don't feel like just because I feel that I'm successful already, that mm -hmm. means I'm stopping. It just means that I'm content. I'm not, um, I'm learning not to, oh, I got to do this, 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 this. I'm okay with things didn't get done today. We're going to get back to it tomorrow. I think that happened after my son was born. Oh, about <laughs> how long after? <laughs> yeah, that, that happened after my son. Not, not long because I used to want to get everything done because I just want, I wanted to make a lot of money. I want to make a lot of money, but I'm learning. Even if you make a lot of money, I have so many people on staff. I, I probably won't see it, but I'm doing it for them to make sure people live a comfortable life. Okay, so before I let you go, um, because I got about five, six minutes left, I think. Um okay. you can go ahead and like tell your website, um who if you have a specific target audience that you are targeting for, how people can reach you, you know, best way to contact you, stuff like that. Sounds good. Listen, y'all, y'all can go reach me at 180life.com, 180life.com. You already know you can follow me on Facebook at Archie J Jenkins. Archie J Jenkins on Facebook or 180 Life on Facebook, Instagram, all of the media platforms. You go on Google, type in 180 Life, and I and I pop up. Um, my target audience. I'm looking for entrepreneurs. I'm looking for singers. I'm looking for songwriters. I'm looking for uh, producers. I'm looking for people that's ready to take it to the next level. Of course, we do marketing from um, photography, videography. Uh, just a exclusive for this particular show. I'm giving you within the next 30 to 45 days, we will have our own Roku channel. Um, we have finalized that paperwork. So it should be popping up any day now. So we are looking for people that are ready to put their show on TV. We are looking for people that are ready to partner with us. Um, last but not least, August the 5th, August the 5th, if you can make your way to San Antonio, Texas, my girl, Allie Caldwell off of the four, you know her from the four, she won the four. She will be hosting our Night of Elegance Gala so it's going to be bananas. It's going to be fun. During the day, we're having a free networking mixer. We're having mm -hmm. a pop-up. All the authors are going to be in the building. We're going to have our panel talk. We're going to talk about life behind business. How do you balance just life behind the X? Um, how do you, you might be a divorce, a widow, a person getting out of prison. We're going to talk about all that. And so I'm um, just wanting to meet everybody. I'm excited. People are flying in from Arizona, Atlanta, D.C., New York. I'm just really excited about that day and that event. So just being able to meet everybody and really connect, connect, connect. All right. That's cool. Do you have uh, music yourself? Since I see you, you know, you said something about singing earlier before, maybe. What I, <laughs> in the words of my favorite movie, Sister Act 2, <laughs> this is just for church. <laughs> <laughs> I just sang for church. That's that that's that's I am the worship leader over at Hope House of Prayer and Evangelism here in San Antonio, Texas. If you guys are in San Antonio, y'all come over and visit us. I am the worship leader over there and I, I really just um I enjoy worshiping God. And so I don't I don't knock nobody else for what they do. But um even if I did sing some R and B, y'all go y'all ain't gonna know. If you're ready to shout, or if you supposed to, you, you're gonna be confused. So you, bet, you better just, be yeah. on there doing the background vocals for your artist. That's all I got to say. <laughs> you better be Look, <laughs> the judges is ready, and they is cutthroat. <laughs> I was on there with one of the judges last night. Who's, was, who's the four? Who's the four artists you got again? Um, the so I got a couple artists coming in. You talking about for um? You said that you managed, well, you said you manage four artists. You said you got a seven year old. Oh, okay, so shout out to Bo Baby. Bo Baby, um, Miss Perry, she's Southern Soul and a gospel singer. Bo Baby is a rap singer. Um, we got uh, Slim, Slim, uh, Slim, Georgia Boy <laughs> Slim from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Um, and we got Trend. We got Trend. So they, they, they're doing good. I'm proud of them. I want them to keep going, um, keep going, keep going after it. You know, some days they want to give up. Big shout out to Mr. Jay Holiday. I'll be on live with him tonight. So. Okay. We're enjoying that. We're enjoying the season. Tonight, as in, what's today? Uh, Thursday. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> tonight right. is Thursday the 7th. The oh, 6th. Thursday the 7th. He will be live with Mr. J Holiday on your po video podcast or your audio podcast? Video. We are video. 
We're going to work on getting the audio, but we're video only. So on YouTube, go on to YouTube to the 180 show. 180-S-H-O-W on YouTube. Go catch up on the seasons. I see you had caught up on the season. She I said, was looking season. at some of them because I was watching. And I was like, oh, man, he kind of. It's funny because you pretty much. Some, along the lines of some of the stuff that I do, but I, I really like you're doing it more in the business end. I, I was just doing it just to be doing it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, because I, I ain't really like doing it for money or nothing, but um, it's like something I'm going to do whether I make money or not. Like I'm going to do it because this, this is just my art. And that's how I keep saying because I am a, like you said, a black person in this world. And these people, they be, they be trying me. So, <laughs> so hey, hey. if that's your getaway, you got to just keep yeah. going out. You know like what I'm saying? That's pretty much all it is. But um, I will. Um, you you don't have your podcast stream. Like, do you want to get your podcast streaming on like the streaming services? Um, I do. I'm supposed to be working on that. Um, especially with the Roku channel starting. Uh -huh. Um, I want to take all the ones that we've already, all the interviews we've already done, so and turn them into and turn them into audio only. Yeah, you online. could probably schedule them. And, like, you could probably just uh, like extract them and then just schedule them and release weekly if you want since you already got so much stuff um the one that i i use a few of them i use a uh, red circle when i first used red circle you could have like unlimited everything and then everybody start going to them so now i think you could do like maybe one or two unlimited with a free program you know what i mean because okay. some of these podcast platforms they ha they limit you on the um amount how many shows you could put up or whatever oh, okay okay but you could just go to like red circle you can go to um Spotify owns Anchor now. That's pretty cool because you can actually, like if you have, one of your artists have music on Spotify, I think you mm -hmm. can pull their music through there easily. Which you can probably, oh, okay. do, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. I'm like, okay, I got to do some research on that. But it's, free. it's just free. If you don't want to have to pay nobody, it's free. It's just the time it takes you. Like if you have your time scheduled th throughout the week when you you know do your I don't know what you do or what you delegate to somebody else but oh crap I got like one minute my bad but I email you <laughs> thank you so much I really appreciate it for real okay no problem thank you you have a good day all right you too bye-bye